Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's webinar brought to you by sharedservicesLink.com and sponsored by Statement Matching. So a few introductions. I am your presenter today. My name is Anna Bauscher. I'm a researcher here at Shared Services Link, and I am joined by two guest speakers, uh, Maria Lewis, who's the Payment Controls and Reporting Manager from Premier Foods, and Daniel Kempton, who's Premier Foods Account Manager from StatementMatching.com. So just a few house rolls before we begin. Um, we will be taking questions during this webinar. You've all come here for a reason, I'm sure, with some niggling questions that you'd like answered by the experts. So you'll see a text box on your screens. Please do send me your questions throughout the webinar. The sooner you send me the question, the more likely it will be asked in the last 10 to 15 minutes at the end. So just for a bit of context before we kick off, before I hand over to our guest speakers, um, let's remind ourselves why we're here. Shared service centers are by nature very high volume organizations um, as they leverage economies of scale. They process a high volume of invoices and deal with extensive supplier bases. However, this means that the size of the problem around reconciling vendor statements to the GRNI accounts can be significant. But why is this a problem? The task itself is a manual fiddly one that is not considered value adding and so often comes low on the priority list of the accounts payable staff. But failing to tackle this head on can place your business at risk, particularly resulting in low visibility of your liabilities, audit control issues, and damaging the relationships with your vendors if you're unable to provide them with accurate and timely information as to their account status. So we are here today to examine exactly how Premier Foods are tackling this problem through automation and as a result are raising the profile of the accounts payable department in the eyes of the CFO. So without further ado, I'd like to hand over to our very first guest speaker. Maria Lewis. Over to you, Maria. Thanks very much. Hi, I'm Maria, and I'm the Payments, Controls, and Reporting Team Manager at Premier Foods. I'll start by taking you through today's agenda, and that will be a brief introduction to Premier Foods, the Premier Foods Shared Service Organization, how we're solving the GRNI problem, what the problem is, what is the solution, how does it work, and what the results are, so there'll be some opportunity at the end for your questions. Premier Foods, chances are that what, you'll have one of our products in your home. Last year, over 98% of British households bought one of our products, and these are the number one or two in each of the categories. These include Ambrosia, Mr. Kipling, Bisto, Sherwood, to name but a few. In 2012, our sales were 1.35 billion, delivering a trading profit of 123.4 million. We employ around 9,000 people, operating over 35 sites across the country. We decided to consolidate the financial processes, including accounts payable, accounts receivable, and general ledger into a shared service center in 2009 and at the same time replace the legacy systems with a core SAP platform. It's been a huge program of change, but four years on and we're almost there. All of our payments come from SAP, and most of the businesses are now on SAP too. But we are still using three legacy systems for one reason or another. Statistics-wise, we've got around 100 FTEs in the shared service centre, and from an account payable perspective, we process 265,000 invoices from 3,500 suppliers. The problem. As a result of all the changes over the last few years, some aspects of the account payable process were not given the attention they deserved, and this has had a knock-on effect up and down the chain. Vendor accounts were not being reconciled on a regular basis, and only a small percentage of accounts were reconciled due to the time it takes to manually reconcile an account. Some supply accounts could take one person a full day to manually reconcile. The GRNI account was previously not reconciled, and AP took on the responsibility for reconciling it and adding to an already high workload. The knock-on effect from unreconciled GRNI was pressure from above to ensure supplier balances were being reported accurately 
and pressure from suppliers chasing invoice status and payments. So what did we do about it? We kicked off a program of improvement starting with invoice automation, which will improve accuracy and speed. We also set targets for users to manually reconcile 30 to 40 supplier statements per month. And we agreed rules for clearing items from the GRNI account and targeted vendors based on the volume and value of invoices and aged GRNI. Where are we now? Invoice automation went live on Monday, and for that we are using e-invoicing via a portal and outsourced scanning, so we've completely removed paper from the process. What can post, will post, and the system routines the exceptions based on our rules. So this really speeds up the process for getting invoices into the system and available to pay or out with the business users in plenty of time to resolve any issues. Manually reconciling the supplier statements has proved to be a really time consuming process and it's not the most popular task for the users either. To really achieve the benefits, we realized that we needed to automate more statements and by chance we came across a couple of tools when we went to market for invoice automation earlier this year. So what did we look for? We get statements in multiple formats, so it needed to handle all of these in a uniform way. Unfortunately, we've still got legacy systems and vendors that invoice across those systems. So we needed the ability to match the same vendor across multiple systems. Like a lot of you probably will have, we also have vendors with multiple accounts, so we also took this into consideration. The whole point of this was to increase the volume of reconciliations, so we required minimal user intervention to do the reconciliations. We've got to keep our auditors happy with accurate supplier accounts, but we also recognize that giving vendors visibility of the reconciliations would have the knock-on effect of reducing phone calls into the accounts payable department. And last but not least, it had to be simple to use. Why did we choose statementmatching.com? Unlike invoice automation, where we get 10 calls a day from vendors, we rarely get any calls about supplier statement reconciliation. It so happened that the guys we chose for invoice automation, a company called Cogent Consulting, had recently launched version 1 of statementmatching.com. We felt comfortable working with Cogent because they really understand the accounts payable process and by working in partnership with them on statementmatching.com, Premier would get a system that worked in what is a relatively complex system landscape and Cogent would have a solution that covered all bases for their other clients. They scan our statements via the same managed service we use for invoice processing. The matching works across company code, across system and across vendors for vendors who have multiple accounts for. Statements are matched automatically by the system and a status is provided for every document and then we can email a copy of the reconciliation to vendors to request copies. We not only wanted a tool for GR and I reconciliation but also reports that our internal audit would be happy to sign off so we worked with Cogent to develop very comprehensive reports that we'll share with you later in the presentation. And of course, you have to follow our AP strategy with a cloud-based system. How does it work for Premier? Well, part of the process happens in our AP department, and part of the process is provided as a managed service by statementmatching.com. This is a high-level overview before we go into each part in more detail. The data goes into the tool from our AP ledgers and statements are uploaded as part of the managed service we get. Our users can then log in to view the results and focus on managing the exceptions. The team will routinely email copies of the recs to vendors to request missing documents and update them on their account status. We also focus on the RECs 
where we have unpaid invoices on the ledger that are not quoted on the statement with a view to potentially clearing them from the GRNI. From a management perspective, we look at the reconciliations when they have been set to complete by the team and the audit report is filed ready for month end reconciliation. I'm going to hand over to Dan now who can take you through this in more detail. Thanks Maria. Hello everybody, I'm Daniel and uh, I'm going to explain what data goes into the system, uh, what the users see and then how we bring suppliers into the process. So how do we get how do we get data into the system? Uh, I'll start by explaining how we get data from Premier's ERP systems into the tool. And like Maria said, Premier have got SAP as the main system, but also process invoices on three legacy systems, which all in interface back to SAP to make the payments. So as part of the setup, we created reports on SAP to download invoice data and supplier data. And you, can see the con and you can see the fields contained in the report on the slide, on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So to get data into the system initially, we ran the reports back to 2010. But then after that, all we download on a daily basis are, are new documents created the day before and also documents where something has changed. So for example, that will include documents where the status has changed from blocked to paid. Maria mentioned that we went live with an invoice automation project on Monday and part of this project was implementing an invoice matching application in SAP. So we also include documents from the new application because the documents can reside in there until the posting to SAP occurs. And we've, we've also implemented a lot of invoice matching add-ons for other customers in the SAP market so it's something that we took into consideration in the design from the outset. Once, once the reports are set up the data imports automatically into statementmatching.com. So it's, it's nothing to manage on a day-to-day -day basis, but I just wanted to cover how it works as part, as part of this webinar. So I believe we've got our first poll question coming up. So on your screen shortly, you should be seeing our first poll question. How many invoices do you process per annum? Is it between 10 and 50,000 per year? Between 50 and 100,000 per year? Between 100 and 150,000 per year? Or between 150 and 250,000 per year? Or more than 250,000 invoices per year. So if as many of you listening as possible could please answer the question, then we'll be looking to close the poll in three, two, one, and you should see the results coming up on your screen shortly. So there's some interesting results. Dan, do you have any comments? Yeah, so it's interesting. They're all they're all at the higher range, higher end of the range. Mm, mm. Great. So we'll go on to the next slide. Over to you, Dan. Okay. So we've covered how we get ERP data into the system. So that's that's kind of half the data that we need because the other the other part of the system is is how we get statements in there. So Maria explained earlier. Um, suppliers send their statements, you know, primarily through the post in paper format, um, but also via email in PDF format. And as of as of Monday, when invoice automation went live, um, suppliers will now send their statements to the same managed service uh, that they send their invoices to. So it kind of makes it really easy for the supplier because all of the documents are going to one place. So the managed service will convert the paper and the PDF statements into electronic files and then send the data and the images into statementmatching.com within 48 hours. So this really sort of takes the data of, um, takes the hassle of data entry away from Premier so that the AP team can spend all of their time managing exceptions and, and meeting their target of reconciling three to 400 statements per month. Um, some of Premier's suppliers send um, Excel statements and these are some of the higher volume ones as well. 
So um, there's, a, there's an easy to use utility on the, on the website that Premier can use to import the Excel statements um, you know, directly without going by the managed service. So when the statements are uploaded, uh, the tool automatically performs matching against the ERP data, which I'll explain on the next slide. But before that, we've got our second poll question. So on your screens now, you should be seeing how many statements do you process per annum? How many statements does your business process per annum? Is it between 10 and 50? between 51 and 200, between 201 and 500, 501 to 1,000 or more than 1,000 statements processed per annum. So we're currently on just over 50% having voted. If the rest of you could please get your answers in now. We'll be closing the poll in 3, 2, 1. So that was 70% of you that, of you that voted will be showing the results now. So interesting. Uh, Dan, any comments on that? Yeah, well, you, you kind of expect the, you know, the higher the volume of invoices that you process, the higher volume of um, statements that you'd get. But I wasn't mm. necessarily expecting a correlation in the number that get processed because, you know, the more that you get, the, uh, the more time that you need. But they, yeah. they're pretty, I think they pretty much match up, don't they? Yes, I think so. Okay, so on to the next slide. Over to you, Dan. Okay. Yes, yeah, so we've covered how we get ERP data into the system, um, how we get statements into the system. So now I'll, I'll cover, you know, how, do, how does the reconciliation actually work? So the, the system always uses the most recently dated statement for matching purpose. And then that way the users are always working with the latest information from a, from a reconciliation perspective. Uh, but the system always keeps previously matched statements um, for audit purposes. So you can always go in at a later date and view a, a, an older document. But once the statements come into the system, it will then continually rematch them in the background when the new, a when the new ARP data arrives. Um, it, it, it matches the documents in a defined sequence. So it will match the statements uh, based on the company and the system it belongs to. And then it will use the invoice number, invoice date, amount, and currency fields to match the invoices in the statement to the invoices in the ERP data. And then after matching is performed, the system gives an overall status to the statement and a status for each line. And I'll explain, I'll explain more about statuses in the next slide. Um, Maria mentioned linked vendors earlier in the presentation, so I'll, I'll exp expand on that here. Um, the, the, reason we've got, we, the reason we have a concept for linked vendors in the system is because we often see customers with multiple accounts on their ERP system for the, for the same vendor. So the tool, tool enables you to link the vendors together for matching purposes. And then if a document has been matched to a linked vendor, the user can see this as part of the status for the statement. So I'll, I'll come on to statuses now, but that effectively covers how the matching process works. And at this point in the process, uh, from Premier's perspective, that the ERP data and the statement data have come into the tool, um, you know, automatically. The reconciliation has been performed with, um, by the tool, and there's been so far no no human intervention by Premier. So, what does it look like for the end user? I'm going to cover some slides now, which just show you what some of the screens look like. So Premier log on to the system via the web, and the first screen a user sees is a, is a search screen, which we've, which we've got up here now. So from here, you can select statements based on uh, company, system, supplier, date, and then the different statuses the systems provide. So on the right-hand side of the screen, you can see the statuses from Premier systems. So we'll just, expand, we'll, we'll just make them bigger, and then I'll explain what they are. The first four are the overall statuses. So this is a state, status that's given to the, to the, to the statement. Um, fully matched means that it's matched all of the invoices on the statement to invoices in Premier's ERP system, and there are no errors. Uh, fully matched with data mismatches means it's found all of the documents, but there are discrepancies in the data. 
and then incomplete means there are documents missing from the ERP system that are quoted on the statement. Um, and then complete is a status that Premier set manually when they've recon reconciled a statement and don't want to work on it any further. Um, and documents set to complete status are, are excluded from the rematching process I explained on the last slide. Uh, the longer list of statuses are what the system allocates to each line. And uh, they're fairly self-explanatory, and I'm going to cover some of those in a second in a bit more detail. But if we just make a selection from the screen here, it takes us to a list of statements. So this is the overview screen. Uh, that's, that's giving you a list of statements. So each line on here is a statement and we can see the status icon on description on the left, uh, the system and company the statement belongs to, details of the supplier and then dates for the statement and entry into the system. So if I select one of the documents it takes me to the detail view. So the, the detail view, that it shows me the statement data on the left alongside the invoice data on the right. So the statement data on the left is what we've captured um, from the document you know, as part of the managed service. And then the invoice data on the right is the data from Premier's um, ERP systems. So in this example, I, I can see from the green ticks that all of the invoices in the statement on the left-hand side have been matched to invoices in the ERP data on the right. And there are and there are no errors, so I've got green ticks. And then if you look if you look in the bottom right, what we also display on this screen is the unmatched ERP invoices. And unmatched invoices means invoices that are on the ledger that have not been paid and are not quoted in the statement. So this example takes us back to the original problem Premier are trying to solve, which is to reduce provisions in their GRNI account. So for anyone who's really, really paying attention, if you look at the unmatched ERP invoices, you'll notice one of the invoices dated the 25th of Feb. But looking at the invoices in the statement on the left-hand side, you can see they all date from the 6th of March to the 25th of April. So why is there an unpaid invoice on the ledger which is older than the invoices quoted on the statement? You know, for, for me, if the supplier isn't chasing it, um, then this is an example of how the tool can be used to spot invoices on the ledger that perhaps shouldn't be there. So this is probably one that Premier would go and investigate. And for my next example, there's only one there's only one line on the statement in this in, in this example, but it's an important one because it's a euro vendor quoting an invoice on their statement in GBP. Uh, there's no matching document in the ERP data, but you can see in the unmatched ERP invoice list that there is a euro invoice for a similar amount dated the month before the document in the statement. So it will also highlight any any documents where the currency is incorrect. And in my next example. Um, this, is an this is an interesting one uh, because it's very common for suppliers to prefix invoice numbers on statements with an INV or, or an I um, or a CR or a C if it's a credit note the other way around, whereas the original invoice um, that they actually sent which we've entered into SAP um, doesn't quote these values, it just quotes the number. So this is an example of that. And the system's quite rightly saying that the invoice number is incorrect because the document number in the invoice data doesn't have INV in front of it. So the way the way the way Premier fixed these is we've got a feature on the website called update, update line status where you can go in, and it basically enables the user to update all of the statement lines to matched um, instead of clicking on each individual line. Uh, and some of Premier's statements can have hundreds of lines, and like I said, this is a common scenario, so this, this feature saves a lot of time. And in my next example, and I've, I've saved this one to last for, for a reason, not, not that it's the only reason Premier implemented this system, um, but missing invoices are nearly as, nearly as important as missing credits, but we want accurate balances, and it would, be, would have been better to find a higher value one. 
but we basically got a, a credit on the statement in this example that's not in the invoice data. And what we what we do with this one is we'd want to request a we we want to request a copy from the vendor. So I'll show you a I'll show you an example of the reconciliation report that was sent to the vendor, and this is on the next slide. So reconciliation reports. Um, <coughs> these, these can be they, these are used internally by Premier as part of the audit report process, which Maria is going to cover in a second. But what Premier users would do is email a copy of the report to the vendor, <coughs> and the benefits are obvious if we look at an example. So this is an example of the order report, and if you if you notice, the the first line on there is the missing credit that we looked at in the uh, in the screenshot in the previous in the previous slide. But the they can the, from here the vendor can see the status of their invoices. So they've got five matched, which are all paid, and then we've got a missing credit note. And what the system does is it inserts some text to request a copy. So sending a copy of sending the suppliers a copy of this really helps the supplier, and it helps Premier by reducing phone calls into AP, chasing status and requesting copies. And this reconciliation report is available for Premier users to view at any time, and it also gets printed off as part of the auditing process, which is my my cue for handing back to Maria to talk to you about internal reporting. Thanks, Dan. <coughs> I'll take you through the internal reporting. So on the audit report, we have the statement totals, payment totals, balances, and a copy of the reconciliation. And they're all available online for audit purposes. So I'll take you through the audit report in a little bit more detail. This will give us the date of the supplier statement without having to search, the statement value, and number of invoices that make up this total. At a glance, you can see if we have invoices or credits missing, including the volume of them, as well as highlighting the number of errors found. On the payment area, this shows us the statement total and the volume and value of invoices that are on the statement that have already been paid. The bottom half shows us the statement versus the system balance and how this is broken down. We, of course, deduct any paid invoices from the statement and system totals. We also deduct part documents as these are not part of the financial balance. We then have any missing copy invoices or credits. And it, we then have... Um, invoices that um, aren't from the statement um, but are showing on our ERP system. And this is very important to look at because it could indicate that we have a, either a statement missing or have invoices on the wrong vendor account. The, the statement rec is not complete if there is a difference and this would need to be investigated before we consider it complete. We then have the data listing which is a list of all the documents that make up all of the balances on the audit report, so you can look into the breakdown of the balances in more detail. We then have the supplier statement matching audit report. This report shows us the statement that has been matched against the ERP data in the system with the status of all the invoices. So we also plan to build additional KPI reports on statements processed per user, the number of missing documents by vendor, and the percentage of statements that are fully matched on upload. And we'll be working with statementmatching.com for this. So 
So what have we achieved so far? We're now capturing all the missing documents on a timely basis and also noticing naughty vendors where we've got credits on the ledger but they are not quoting them on their statements. The miskeying of data and currency errors is going to reduce the way with invoice automation but for anyone with a manual process the tool really helps to find these errors. It is really helping the team highlight potential opportunities to release provisions from GRNI, which is helping to raise the profile of AP internally. And from the supplier's perspective, they really appreciate it because we can tell them the status of their account on a proactive basis and it shows we're in control. So in summary, it's still early days for Premier using the tool but we're on our way to achieving our targets of three to 400 statements per month. It's enabling us to confidently re release provisions from the GRNI account. And statementmatching.com is also complementing our other initiatives to improve service to our suppliers. The invoices get into our system much quicker. They can see the status of their account online and we send them a copy of their reconciliation by email. We're being really nice to them, so maybe procurement can negotiate a discount during contract reviews. Who knows? That's the end of the presentation, so thanks for joining, and I'll hand back over to Anna for the question session. Thank you so much, Maria. Um, just before we get into our questions, we do have one final poll question for our listeners to take part in. So you should be seeing this question come up on your screen now. We want to know how many users are involved in processing your statements. So in terms of full-time equivalents, FTEs here, is it one to two? Is it three to five? Is it six to nine or is it more than 10 users or FTEs processing statements within your organization? We're currently only at 60% having voted, so if we could get those numbers up just a little. If you haven't voted already, please do so or take a guess if you don't know the exact answer. Closing the poll in three, two, one. So I've closed that poll and those results should be coming up on your screen now. What do you make of those results, Dan? Yeah, yeah, it's kind of the other way, uh, the other way around. But, I suppose, yeah, I think it's, uh, you, for, to have 10 plus people in, involved in the process, yeah, you have to be having quite a high volume of um, statements. So, yeah, it's probably about right. Excellent. So, now let's move on to some questions from our audience. So one question that has come through, I suppose this goes more to Maria. What criteria do you use to decide which vendor accounts you're going to reconcile? Okay. We look at the age in the GRNI, so any vendors that have a balance in there over a certain age and the high value suppliers as well. So it's a combination of the two. Who's got the highest volume and value? Okay, thanks for that. Um, another question um, we have is, what has your experience been of training new users um, in Premier Foods to the system? Um, Users have actually picked uh, the tool up really, really quickly. We actually trained someone the other day and they were up and running within the hour. Um, it's really, really easy to use and we can get people set up very, very quickly. Okay, thank you for that. Um, another question we have, we have here is, is, does this application work? Uh, just for companies that have EDI invoicing or does it work for companies that are using other other methods, Dan? Um, yeah, it doesn't really, it, how the invoices arrive in the first place, it, it doesn't really matter. 
Um, so whether you process uh, invoices, you know, via EDI, paper, or, or PDF, it, it doesn't really matter. The, the vendor's going to send you a statement, and there are going to be documents on there. Um, so yeah, how how the invoices arrives, it's um, yeah, it's not really relevant to how statement matching works because it, it's just taking documents that are on your ledger, you know, regardless of how they came in. Okay, I see. So most, um, most, most, most customers, you know, they process a mixture of electronic invoices and, you know, paper invoices and PDF invoices. And most customers also receive statements in a mixture of those formats. So it doesn't really matter. Okay, okay. So another, another question um, on the kind of technical side. Can remittance advices be attached to the statement reconciliation back to the vendor? Um, not not via not via this tool, no. Okay, um, no. and another one we've got: um, Are open GRs validated before the data is shared with StatementMatching.com? So, in a way that only valid open GRs are looked looked at for payments. No, how how the system how the system works is it will match the the documents in the statement to the documents that you've got in your in your ERP system. So whether it's an invoice or a, or a credit, it's not it's not actually matching it get, matching it against the goods receipt account as such. It's matching the invoices and credits in the statement to the invoices and credits that you've got on your ledgers. Right, okay. Um, and so uh, I guess a question for both of you then. Um, was this solution was it fairly off the shelf, or did you have to tailor it, bespoke it for Premier Foods' needs? Well, like Maria said earlier on in the presentation, um, we've been doing accounts payable projects for getting on for nine years now, and whenever we went in and did an invoice automation project, um, we'd go live with that, and then the, the next question would be, how can we automate supplier statement matching? Um, so when we when we we kind of looked on the market at the different software vendors, and there was no there was no real solutions out there for automating supplier statement matching. There was there were lots of things on the accounts receivable side uh, for doing bank reconciliations and, and AR reconciliations. So what we ended up doing was was um, uh, working with a number of our shared service centre customers. You know, particularly Premier, they were they were kind of leading on it. And we developed sort of version one of the application based on what the customers wanted. Right. And then we've gone through lots of iterations of testing with it so that we've now got a solution which is, you know, repeatable, um, easy to set up for any new customers. And we've catered for some very, you know, complex environments at, at Premier and also some of our other customers where they've got multiple ERP systems. Um, but right. now we've got something that works, you know, very simple and very out of the box. Um, regardless of the ERP application that you use. Okay, um, and uh, another question. Um, I think we may have covered this earlier, um, Maria, but we've got someone asking, what duration does it take to match a vendor statement on average? Um, obviously, it varies as if you've got to have manual intervention because you have ones that you don't actually have to touch at all. Um, and there will be some ones that you do have to do a little bit of investigation work. Um, so it can vary from a few minutes up to probably 30 minutes if it's a bit of a complex one and there's a lot of, of work to be done. Um, sometimes it may get a little bit more than 30 minutes, 40 minutes, um, but it's certainly a, a very big improvement in how we used to do it manually. If we had one particular supplier, they would actually take you a full day just to reconcile the statement to a mill balance, and that was without investigating any discrepancies and understanding any problems that you had on that vendor. That was actually just getting it to a balance of nil, and then you would do your investigation. Okay, okay. Um, and another one for you, Maria. If a document is in a query, for example, a purchase order mismatch, PO mismatch, will it bring this back as a query status? Yes, it would, yeah. yeah. It, 
I, I, I can add to that if you like, because obviously we only we we mentioned that Premier went live with invoice automation on Monday. So what what that means is they now have documents in an application that are not yet posted on SAP. So the document is, is kind of in there at a status which might be. Uh, you know, there might be a missing receipt or a price problem or the document might be in workflow. So statementmatching.com is, is taking a download of documents from the invoice automation application and then we're using those documents when we do the match. So it's not only matching against the ledger, it's matching against documents that haven't hit the ledger yet. Right, right. And so um, someone else has asked, um, what time did it take to step this up? So you so you went live with this on Monday. What what time did it take to kind of get it all up and running? Well, what we went live with on Monday was the uh, in, was invoice automation. But is is the question related to how long it took um, statement matching to go live? Yes, I think it's related to the whole project. So every single piece of it. If you could talk us through, you know the time it took to get the invoice automation live and estimated time for um, the other aspects to go live. Yeah, well, I think invoice automation, when did invoice automation start? Um, Maybe three months? Yeah, about three, four months ago. Yeah, I think in, invoice automation, we started, um, you know, three, four months ago with, with, with the blueprint and then go live was um, Monday, the 18th. Monday just gone, so about yeah, three to four months from start to finish for, for invoice automation. Um, statement matching is, you know, like, like I said, we've been through um, a series of iterations of, of developments with Premier on statement matching um, to get it right. So, you know, that's taken that's taken up to a year um, for the for that implementation. But, you know, like I said, it was kind of a joint development with Premier Foods. So, other customers that we've got using the solution, typical implementation time is two to three weeks. Okay, okay. Um, and another question we've had is: Is there a facility to record communications with the supplier um, for statement requests, etc., Maria? Is there what? Sorry. Is there a facility to record communications with the supplier? So any kind of back and forth about um, about statement requests and so on. Um, we actually request statements outside of this tool. So we have an inbox um, that we would contact the, the vendor directly to request the statement. Um, but actually from the tool, you can email the vendor directly to request the copies. Um, but the reply doesn't come back to the tool, it comes back to um, the relevant inbox. Yeah, it comes back to the inbox um, that the user, the, the user that is logged on, um, it comes back to their inbox. So if they send a copy of the reconciliation back to a vendor um, via the tool, if the vendor replies, it then comes into their own inbox so that you're not managing you know, two, uh, things in two places. Right. Um, so it just yeah, which it just integrates with your whatever you use for email. Right. Okay. Um, and one final question we've had um, from a listener today is: uh, Would you be happy to do a, a, a site visit or a teleconference to discuss any of this in more detail, either of you? Yeah. Sure. Okay, excellent. So anyone that does want to find out any more information about anything that we've discussed today, statementmatching.com, or how it's been working at Premier Foods, please feel free to contact Daniel um, at the following email address and telephone number. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for, um, for questions today. Um, so just before we log off um, this webinar, I just want to run you through the exciting things that we've got coming up. At shared services link so we've got a few pretty good webinars coming up over the next couple of months and weeks so I'm sure some of these are going to be relevant to what's currently happening in your organization be it purchase to pay uh, be it um, moving to global accounts payable or the automation again of your invoices 
Also, next year, 2014, we've got a pretty exciting conference schedule lined up. So if you're a global process owner, please come along. Feel, please feel free to come along to our brand new seminar taking place in February. And if you are a senior shared services professional, come along to our European Summit for Leaders in Shared Services taking place in March. So that's all we've got time for today. Thank you very much to my uh, speaker guests, Daniel and Maria, and to our audience. We'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.